Hello there, how's everyone doing today? I love doing these videos that are catered towards my baby squids. New riders are always so fresh-faced and eager to learn, still slimy from their journey through the birth canal from the MSF course to the internet in an attempt to find that deep hidden riding knowledge that the MSF doesn't want you to know. Oh shoot, scratch that. I just learned squids lay eggs and don't perform live birth. But anyway, the sentiment is the same. You wanna keep learning about motorcycles and your Papa Yam is here to cram as much of that sweet, decadent, dare I say, unctuous riding knowledge into your brain as I can. So today we're talking about beginner rider accessories. You've got your bike, you've got your gear, you've got a five-year plan like Stalin did on how to rekindle your relationship with your father. What else do you need to know to improve your safety or comfort on your ride? We've got all that and more on today's video. Let's get into it. So you finally got yourself a motorcycle, whether that happens to be a Rebel 250 with 69,000 miles or a brand new Ninja 400 fresh off the showroom floor. One of the first things you should do is get yourself some crash protection. Hopefully you've already got some crash protection for yourself at this point, like riding gear and an insurance policy, but I would still recommend getting some crash protection for your bike. Unlike anodized gas caps or novelty paint jobs, crash protection is one of the few mods or accessories you can install on your bike that will actually help add value to your motorcycle. And if they don't add value, at least they'll help preserve whatever value it had to begin with. Because remember, your beginner bike likely won't be a forever bike. And if you're savvy and take care of it, you'll likely be able to sell it after a season or two for about what you bought it for. Bearing in mind you didn't wrap the exhaust in heat wrap or roast the rear tire by trying to impress your weed dealer with a wicked burnout. If you're new to riding, your bike is going to end up horizontal in one way or another. Hopefully it'll happen with you standing standing over it with a confused look on your face as to how the bike ended up in that position. Instead of you being pinned between your bike and a guardrail, with the disembodied voice of Morgan Freeman asking if you have any unfinished business here on Earth before you ride the angelic Turbo Busa all the way to the great Discord server in the sky. Crash protection comes in different styles depending on the type of bike you have. Sportier street bikes can usually be equipped with frame sliders. Frame sliders are designed to protect the motorcycle's frame and engine in the event of a low side or a tip over. They are usually made of hard plastic or reinforced nylon and are mounted on the frame or engine mounts. In a crash, the sliders absorb impact and help prevent direct contact between the ground and critical components, reducing the risk of damage. But if you ride a real bike like a Hogley Davidson, you can get a crash bar. Also known in the geriatric community as highway bars, you can use them as an elevated footrest if you need your turning experience to be even more reminiscent of a visit to the gynecologist office. Crash bars are big metal bars that attach to the front of your frame and extend outward in a way that they should take a majority, if not all of the impact in the instance Miss Piggy decides to lay down for a nap. Adventure bikes also tend to make use of some sort of variant of the engine guard with metal tubing arranged in a way to protect the fuel tank, engine, and the 3-in-1 HP printer that most ADVs are equipped with these days. Whatever bike you ride, just search for it followed by crash protection and you'll find plenty of options to get your bike ready for abuse. I'm also really fond of engine guards. These are just plastic cases you put on the engine cases. They're super easy to install and they slide really nice too. If your bike is already protected from crashes, you'll need to make sure it's protected from its second most dangerous predator, humans. Whether you're a pragmatic person who recognizes that anything of considerable value will likely disappear if left unattended for an extended period of time, especially if that valuable is an object on wheels, or a naive person who believes that criminals and thieves would never violate your personal belongings. The cold hard truth is that motorcycles get stolen, about 50,000 per year on average. And while there is no surefire way to prevent a motorcycle from being stolen, besides keeping it locked away within four solid walls, taking preventative measures can at least make stealing your motorcycle not worth the hassle for the thief with a short attention span. Even if you're able to park your bike nice and snug in a garage at night, having a disc lock can be a great safety measure for the instances you have your bike parked in a public area for an extended amount of time without your supervision. Disc locks are compact, portable locks that attach to the brake disc of your motorcycle. They prevent the front wheel from rotating it, making it difficult for someone to ride or move the bike without removing the lock. And it makes it difficult for you to ride away as well if you forget to take off the lock yourself. Most disc lock users have had this happen to them at least once. I mean, hey, at least you know it works then. There are also throttle locks that lock your throttle and chain locks that are comprised of a chain and a padlock. If you couldn't infer that on your own, what lock is best for you will depend on the level of security you need and how inconvenient do you want to be for yourself and potential thieves to be? 
But in my opinion, a disc lock is a really great solution for your bike. They're safe and convenient. There's also nothing convenient about carrying a three foot heavy duty chain in your backpack while you ride. We have a few different disc lock options from Avis on yamanoob.co that don't just physically lock onto your brake disc, but also include a 100 decibel alarm system, which is a great option for added security. The next motorcycle accessory actually comes from the sponsor of today's video, Chin Mounts. Chin Mount specializes in helmet-specific mounting hardware for multiple types of action cameras, including GoPros, Insta360s, and more. Helmet cameras are becoming increasingly popular these days, not just for moto vloggers and content creators, but riders of all types. Just like a dash cam in your car, a helmet cam can come absolutely clutch in the case of an accident or incident on the road. Any experienced rider will tell you you see the craziest stuff on a motorcycle for some reason. And with a helmet-mounted camera, you can now have cold, hard proof. In a less in serious context, having a camera mounted on your helmet can allow you to document some of your favorite scenic rides or even just give you the opportunity to capture some high speed thrills that you can use to flex on your buddies with. And if you're a content creator who likes to share your riding videos on social platforms, chin mounts also allows you to mount your camera vertically so your shots will fit perfectly into the vertical aspect ratio you find on Instagram or TikTok. Chin mounts makes it easier than ever to safely and easily connect an action camera to your helmet. They have over 300 model specific mounts, which means you no longer have to fiddle with generic mounting hardware. And because you're a loyal Yammy new viewer, you can go to chinmounts.com slash yammy and use the code yammy for 10% off your order. Again, that is yammy for 10% off your entire order. If you're a rider who likes to take riding videos or either for business or pleasure, you need to get yourself a chin mount specific system for your helmet. Now, on to the next accessory. There are multiple ways to upgrade the visor on your helmet. You can get a tinted visor for sunny days in squiddly anonymity, or you can get a photochromic visor that automatically adjusts the degree of tint based on the amount of UV light it is exposed to. But none of those are gonna do you any good for visibility or comfort if your visor ends up plastered in the remains of a thousand deceased insects. Every rider has been there at some point, your field of vision is crystal clear, you're taking in a panoramic vista of middle America farm fields, when you ride through a swarm of bugs with a population density higher than the moon mist bathhouse at the gatherings of those juggalos, and your visor becomes encased in goo and carcasses. Out of desperation, you try to wipe some of it off with your glove, which as any seasoned rider knows, makes it just like a hundred times worse. So then you have to pull into the nearest gas station, avoid the juvenile delinquents who ask you to buy them vape pods, and are forced to use the window squeegee on your visor. And unless your head is the same size as Andre the Giant's, the visor on your motorcycle helmet is nowhere near the size of a car windshield, which means while you're removing the bug juice, you're also leaving streaks and dripping excess washer fluid into your helmet, which is pretty gross. This has been a very long-winded way of saying, just get some dedicated visor cleaners and microfiber cloths and keep it on your bike. It will come in handy countless times. For some reason, the chemical complexity of insect innards combined with the films and polymers used on a visor create this impervious force field that only dedicated visor cleaner is able to do an adequate job of cleaning. Windex kind of works, but not really that well. It also messes up the visor. Diluted dish soap also kind of works, but also not really. Human saliva works all right, but it might give you PTSD flashbacks from your spit shining days in military school. Just get visor cleaner. Muck Off makes a great visor cleaning kit. It's available at yamanube.co. You won't regret it. It might not be the most glamorous or talked about motorcycle accessory, but something every rider needs is a nice set of earplugs or a large box of disposable earplugs. Hearing is important. I think that's something we can all agree on. Whether it's the classic masterpiece of Brahms Symphony No. 2 or the soothing sounds of a baby crying at the top of their lungs while you're on a 10-hour flight, the world has endless auditory pleasures waiting to be discovered. So don't get tinnitus when you're 25. You might think, but yeah, my mom won't even let me put on an aftermarket exhaust on my CBR300R. What do I need earplugs for? What is at least an equally dangerous decibel level as a loud exhaust is wind noise. A beginning Inner rider needs to be more cognizant of this as the helmet you purchased for 99 bucks just to take the MSF course, unsure of if you'd even end up getting your own bike, probably has little to no sound dampening. And even if your beginner bike tops out at 75 miles per hour, that is still plenty fast to give your eardrums some wear and tear. Some people like to get special designer earplugs. I like to stick with a box of disposable foam ones. Either way, it is a sound investment to make. See what I did there? 
your older self will thank you. Wear earplugs on your ride, seriously. Another less than glamorous but also underrated motorcycle accessory is just a good old fashioned motorcycle cover. If your bike is destined for a hard life of outdoor living, a motorcycle cover is an absolute must have. A motorcycle cover is really doing the most thankless job there is. In a basic sense, yeah, a cover will protect your bike from the elements. Things like snow, sleet, bird poop, and acid rain all pose a threat to your motorcycle if left unattended both long term or just while parked temporarily somewhere. Additionally, a cover for your motorcycle can act as an extra layer of protection from theft. A motorcycle under a cover is proven to be less titillating to an aroused motorcycle thief as opposed to a spicy red sport bike or a chromed out cruiser left unattended, bearing it all, provoking a thief as their mind starts to wander about all those possibilities. If a thief sees your motorcycle under cover, they might think you're just really overprotective of your boom venom 250 super sport Chinese crap bike, or hopefully, if you're lucky, some rich lawyer will leave his Ducati uncovered, which will capture a thief's attention before they have time to consider what delicacies you're hiding from the world beneath the humble cover. A motorcycle cover can even be great if you tend to get caught in the rain. That way you can cover your bike while you wait for refuge inside of a waffle house and you don't have to deal with the damp motorcycle seat afterwards. You might be thinking, man, this is a lot of accessories. Where the heck am I supposed to keep all this stuff? Well, what if I told you that the next motorcycle accessory on the list was capable of housing other accessories? As exhibit from Pimp My Ride would say, we put some accessories on your accessories so you can hold more accessories or whatever that meme was from like 10 years ago. But I am, of course, talking about motorcycle luggage. Luggage can take many different forms. You've got tail bags, tank bags, saddle bags for the cruiser boys or panniers for the adventure elitist. Regardless of what style fits your unique perspective towards reality, luggage on your motorcycle is a total game changer. Have you ever hopped on your brand new bike, rolled out of the garage, closed the garage door with the opener and then thought, great, now where the hell am I supposed to put this garage door opener? in your pocket? Come on, get yourself some luggage, stop wasting your time with these silly questions. Plus, luggage will make room for a toolkit, tire inflator, or any other accessories you might find yourself needing. A luggage option that I really enjoy that has become more popular lately are the modular bags that can be mounted on your bike and then removed and used as a traditional backpack. That way you can take whatever you need with you while you're out and about and not have to worry about leaving anything on your bike. Kuryakin makes a few different bag options like that as well as other general universal motorcycle luggage. Nelson Rig makes great stuff too and you already know you can find it at amynoob.co. It's your one-stop shop for all your beginner motorcycle needs. Is that a plug? Yes. Is it completely true? You betcha. You know, I wouldn't steer you wrong. Now, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you're a beginner rider who's looking for more content like this, you got to get set up for success on your motorcycle journey. You know you got to subscribe. You just got to do it. We love the juicy beginner content here. Just ask your mom. She knows. She wants you to subscribe to Yammy Noob as well. Don't disappoint her. Hit that subscribe button. Fact. The Dolphinarium experiment was funded by NASA with the goal of teaching dolphins human language. The 24-hour cohabitation between naturalist Margaret Lovat and the subject dolphins resulted in sexual encounters, LSD use, and a voluntary dolphin drowning. Goodbye. Keep, Keep watching. watching.